The human body is such a beautiful and complex structure and it is driven and controlled by our minds. But what I find so interesting is that what within our minds controls inspiration? Where do our defining moments come from? This is my defining moment that I would like to share with you. So the way the story really begins is it was during finals week at USF and I was stressed out, you know, like every, every other student is. And something came over me and said, you know what, Caesar, why don't you uh, just take a, take a time out and, and go to church, right? Go to church, go chill, listen to a good sermon. I went to church, it was a normal mass, nothing spectacular. And afterwards, I see these three nuns. And they didn't look like they were from here. There was just something so genuine about them. And one of the nuns comes up and starts speaking, Dr. Vachora Vincentina. And she starts talking about Uganda and the civil war that happened and the orphans, the child warriors being baptized by blood and how that now that the war is simmering down that she has these five-year-olds, eight-year-olds, 10, 11, 12-year-olds that were former soldiers and she has the task to assimilate them back into a normal society. And she said at first she took in one orphan, then two, then three, and that became 30, 40, to a point where she couldn't even take any more. And she runs an orphanage in Gulu, Uganda, or for the salary that she makes from being a CEO of a hospital, which is Ambrosoli uh, Memorial Hospital in Kolongo, Uganda. And I just feel so captivated. You know, sometimes you hear things and you feel like, wow, I, I, can't, I can't give you anything, but all I can give you is my time. So afterwards, I was compelled to go talk to her and I was like, Dr. Vicentina, you know, my name is Cesar Hernandez. I really don't have much, but I would love to help you. I'm just a student at the time. And she goes, fantastic, Cesar. She gave me this beautiful postcard of Uganda. She goes, come to Uganda and see what I'm talking about. So uh, imagine me, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I've never crossed the ocean in my life. And I had to make a decision. Should I go to Uganda, to Gulu, to Kolongo? And I remember being at my computer, about to pay $1,800 for a ticket to Uganda. And I did it and it changed my life completely. You know, people always say that there's defining moments in your life. And when I got over to Uganda, something spectacular happened to me when I got to Gulu. You know, and I, I get there and I get out of the car and I'm in Gulu, Uganda, straw huts and all these orphans. And the orphanage was, is about four huts. I'm here, Sister Vincentina Jora. This is our home, a humble home. As it is, I'm a religious. I consecrated myself to serve the people, not to serve myself. So that's what the home portray. So she has 28 children. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She raises all the orphans. And they had food laid out for me, which was amazing. And this was a defining moment in my life. You know, I've received many awards in my lifetime, but after I finished eating, the orphans came into the hut and they began to sing. You know, all they were able to give me was their voices and they gave me their voices. And that's when I knew that for the rest of my life, I will be committed to helping others. And that was my defining moment. We had raised up some money, my nonprofit, the Sarah Foundation, 
which came up to about 250,000 shillings. And they showed me around the orphanage, the, the huts, the subsistent living that they do, and told me their stories, told me what it was like in the war, um, their dreams, their aspirations, what they hoped to do. Not what they were taught to do was to kill, but what they, their ambitions are to be physicians, businessmen, political leaders, very ambitious dreams. After about staying a day in the orphanage, uh, the doctor told me to come up with her to the hospital, Dr. Ambrosoli Memorial Hospital up in Colongo. And I really wasn't prepared for what I was going to see up in Colongo. It's a beautiful place. It's as if when you're driving there, you see this big mountain that looks like a shark fin that comes up out of the earth. And at the base of the, of the mountain is a medical hospital, a mission, an elementary school, a junior high school, a college of nursing, and a midwife school. Dr. Vicentina, runs everything, right? She manages the whole operation. And Dr. Vicentina is literally the most remarkable person I've ever met in my life that is dedicated to helping others in periods of war. She would tell me stories of performing operations and bullets flying by her ears, bombs going off. That's the only modern hospital that they have, so it's a lifeline. Not only that, but it's a college of nursing and a college of, uh, of midwifery. And it's one of the only two locations in Central Africa where nurses and midwives are trained. And once they're trained there, they're able to go and service the entire Central African region. It's just a remarkable operation. But even though it hit me that they need help, Touring the hospital, you see outdated machinery from the 1980s. The pediatric ward, you see the children on the floor because the doctor told me, Caesar, I have to make a decision whether or not to get them beds or IV liquids and fluids. And obviously I'm gonna choose the, the IVs or the liquids or the nutrition that they need. So you will see people hooked up to the IVs but laid out on the floor. You'll see burn units that have asbestos, surgical wards with asbestos, uh, HIV wards that are just bunkers, but they make do with what they have. They don't have a choice. The most common sickness in children here are malaria, is the key killer, followed by chest infection during the rainy season, which translates to pneumonia. She showed me the trucks that they use. They don't have an ambulance. They don't have a truck to bring up medical supplies. But they make do with what they have. And then I felt this daunting task, a great undertaking that Caesar, why don't you try to help these people? I'm still a student. But just like those students gave me their voices, all I can give them is my time and my imagination. And this is the reason why I decided to make this film, to let people know what's happening. And if you don't even support the cause, at least get across to your mind the blessings that you have to be able to be in this country and to be able to pursue your dreams or to even be able to have access to good health care or to even go to a hospital with advanced equipment. And that's why I'm here. And that's the reason why I wanted to showcase what it is that we did in Uganda and the tremendous story of Dr. Achora Vincentina, a remarkable woman, a lifeline in Central Africa that has saved many people's lives delivered children, taught children, educated orphans. And it's gone unnoticed until now. 
but I love praising the Lord in serving Him through others. Thank uh, you for the gift you have <laughs> given to these dear little ones of mine, my angels. I love them. Do you love me? Yes. <laughs> Are you sure you love me? Yes. How much do you love me? Uh, 